Today we are talking about taking data science to production. And like we heard from Joanna, artificial intelligence is shaping our world, right? So now we are talking about how to shape artificial intelligence. So here we are talking about like data science. And what I mean by data science is like machine learning models. Those are built by data scientists. And once they are built, how do we bring them to production? Um, sometimes models are built in real time, like in a Lambda architecture or a batch process that, that builds the model. And then you need to bring it to life. You need to bring it to production. So usually we see um, three different forms of, um, of model being deployed to production. One is the real-time predictions model. And here we deploy the model as, a, as an API, as a web service. So it can be like a SOAP service or REST service. SOAP services are not, not very popular. Um, we also heard that EJBs are dying or dead. But probably, I'm, I'm, su I'm sure somewhere out there is implementing machine learning models on EJB as well. So uh, these are usually designed for, to be used by like web applications, mobile applications for real-time predictions. And then we have another form, which is like semi-real-time predictions. These are predictions applied on a stream of data that's coming into your organization. So it can be like a Kafka queue or a messaging queue, RabbitMQ or something. And usually people write like consumers on those, on those topics or queues to make predictions using model and then, um, and then either publish, publish it to another queue or persist it to like a file system. Um, so that's, that's another common scenario. And then we also have predictions in batch mode, right? So when we are making predictions on like hundreds of terabytes of data, then we need to use something like MapReduce or Spark to make predictions and, and um, either persist the data or integrate with an external system. So uh, these are like different forms of, of deploying machine learning models, right? I also personally believe that more and more internet connected devices will be able to deploy machine learning models on themselves like self-driving cars, right? They don't reach out to a server to make prediction about their surroundings uh, because that will be too slow. So they are capable of hosting some of the models, like very basic models on themselves. And I think that's going to be a trend in future. Um, we'll see more and more devices hosting um, these models on themselves. There are two different approaches. Um, I'll talk about extremes and I'll talk, talk about the gray areas as well. But there are two different approaches to actually the process of building machine learning models and bringing them to production. Um, one approach, what I call, is like custom tailored suit kind of thing. So when we go to a tailor to make a suit, we give them measurement, and um, they just create a unique custom made suit for us, right? Um, a lot of teams follow this approach, where data scientists, they build the, the model, which they think is accurate and efficient. And then they collaborate with data engineers to bring it to life, to bring it to production. So here, the role of data engineers is write a custom program for every machine learning model. Um, they will write with proper structure, with all the architecture requirements, data security, um, integration with CI, CD, uh, blue-green deployment, if that's what they are following. Um, so they will take care of all of those technical details in, in bringing the, the model to life. Now, with this approach, what happens is data engineering starts to become a bottleneck very quickly. Because when you have a lot of data scientists, they are iterating very quickly. They are building new models very frequently. They want to test things out. Um, and then data engineering cannot keep up with them. It's just not a scalable model. So um, we have another approach that we have seen in the industry, which is something inspired, what I call, it's inspired by a 3D printer model kind of thing, where um, the data engineering or the engineering team focuses on building a platform that is more like a 3D printer, which takes ideas from data scientists and brings them to life, right? So that's what 3D printers are supposed to do. You provide your plan in a prescribed format, and it generates the actual real artifacts for you, right? So. Uh, the platform here we are talking about usually consists of like all the integrations with file system, data lake, um, CI, CD framework, um, test automation, um, deployment processes, scheduling, all of that is integrated in this automated platform. 
And all the data scientists they need to do is deliver their artifact in that prescribed format that's needed for the platform. That's all they need to do. But uh, it's not that simple, right? Of course, uh, for data scientists to adapt to this model, of course, there are advantages and motivation for them because now they have ability to innovate very quickly, iterate very quickly on their machine learning models. But at the same time, they need to go through a little bit of learning curve just to make sure that their artifacts are within the prescription of the model or the platform that takes their, their artifacts and bring them to life. So there are a few things that they need also need to like go through learning curve and change of a little bit of like a mindset, more of a programming mindset and rather than just pure data scientist mindset, I would say. Um, and also, I would, I would mention one thing though is like we are talking about two different extremes, right? One is totally manual approach, which was the previous one, and then we are talking about fully automated approach. Um, we also noticed that a lot of teams are somewhere in the mid between, like they have automated part of the process, but not fully there kind of thing. But we still see the trend towards the, that fully automated pipeline that allows you to build and deploy the model. Now, who needs to do what kind of thing in this fully automated structure? Um, so, of course, data scientists, they need to write clean code. And this is where I was mentioning that there is some mindset change needed and some learning curve involved for the data scientists. <coughs> so they need to start writing better code um, with more like well-defined variables and some functional boundaries. Um, they don't need to be like full-fledged expert programmer, but, uh, but it should be something that, that is deployable to the production. And the reason for that is the platform is not going to write code for you, right? So you need to write better code. There's no human involved to change your code before it goes to production. And functional boundaries are important within the program or the scripts because uh, if you don't have functional boundaries, then you cannot write test cases. So that's my next point, which is they also need to write test cases um, because test cases are very domain specific, very model specific, very pipeline specific. So they need to be written by the data scientist who is authoring um, the, the, the pipeline or the model itself. From number three onwards, that's something should be taken care of by the platform itself. So it should be automated by the platform. Um, usually platforms create um, uh, a program from the script. So a script can be like Jupyter Notebook or R script, and a program is generated from it. And the reason why there is a program that's generated is usually the programs are better suited for like test automation or syntax checking or static analysis of the code. Um, binary formats like Jupyter Notebooks don't work well with them. So that's the reason usually that's, that step is involved. Um, the next step, of course, is model persistent. So if we are building the model in runtime, like if we are using Lambda architecture or we are building model like every night from the fresh data or something like that, the new model that's built every time, we need to persist it somewhere so that in future we can also go back and audit like what model was built and deployed. We also have ability to like regression test or A-B test or like champion challenger kind of testing. Um, so every version of the model should be persisted. There are many persistence models like um, so many, many persistent formats like PMML or Onyx or Pickle. If you are using Python, usually you will use Onyx or Pickle. Um, if you like XML, then probably PMML. Um, so once you process the model, they, they should be available somewhere in repository like Artifactory or Git or whichever repository you are using, and then or, or, or file system where it can be accessed for deployment. And then of course it should the platform should take care of CI/CD as well, which is test automation, integration with deployment systems, um, integration with scheduling aspects, orchestration of the job if it is a scheduled job. Um, and blue-green deployment if, it's a, if it is a REST API. So all of that should be taken care by the platform uh, as part of the CICD. So that usually completes the, the entire cycle of bringing a machine learning model to production. Now, uh, just a small example. So on the left, what you see is uh, a Jupyter notebook that I created. And the purpose of this notebook was to create a model to predict whether a message is spam or not. So it's a very basic model, very simple on a small amount of data. Uh, but if you see on the left is basically I'm just using a lot of data exploration commands. Um, but on the right, I have the same exit 
in notebook, it does the same exact thing. It's just that it's better formatted. I have some functional boundaries. And also, I'm writing some test cases in this case. So this is all we are asking for from the data scientists in terms of their learning curve and what they need to change in their ways of working um, to make it happen for, for like, you know, the fully automated deployment process for machine learning models. So that's, that's all I have. Thank you.